Uh, and this welcome. Is two girls, one ghost. Two girls, one ghost. And we are your ghostesses. That is Corinne. And I am Sabrina. And today we are both repping Two Girls, One Ghost merch. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. I have chills. Mine is the see something, sage something. And you have the I have chills. Mm-hmm. And the chills is made up of little tiny ghosts, ghosts. right? Little yeah, ghosties. So cute. Actually, so cute. I think we might have just gotten perhaps a new listener at the grocery store the other day because tell me more by the other day i mean yesterday but by the time this comes out it'll be the other day but i was (laughs) checking out and this woman was definitely um i I don't know i i was nervous getting in her line because i didn't have my id with me but i was trying to buy a bottle of wine and Mm. and based on her interactions with everyone in front of her i was like i'm not gonna get away with this but I got up there and she goes, oh, I really like your shirt. And it was the favorite things. So it was the one that has like oh, cedar and a feather yeah. and a crystal. Um, and I was like, oh, thank you so much. And she goes, can I see Can I see more of that? So I had to like stand there like, this, <laughs> like stretching out my shirt as she went through each single thing. I love that. And she that. goes, what is that about a ghost on the bottom? And I was like, oh, it's, it's two girls, one ghost. It's just like, you know, a little spooky, witchy shirt. And she was like, okay, well, where do Why I Why didn't you it? say podcast? Well, I finally did because I was nervous. <laughs> I mean, it literally says two girls, one ghost. You should say it's our podcast. I did eventually because she was like, well, how do I buy, how do I buy this shirt? I'm and glad she like, asked well. a bunch of questions. Yeah, she really had to follow up hard with me. But maybe we have mm-hmm. another, another sh- shirt representative who will be wearing I it. I love it. I love that. I also love that, again, you and I were weirdly in sync without talking to each other. Like, I feel like the last couple of episodes, we have not worn merch. True. And then and today we it just felt right. joined the Zoom and we were both wearing merch. Well, I think you and I were really in the spirit of Two Girls, One Ghost because yesterday we launched our YouTube. <laughs> we are very – the spirit is with us. Because, yeah, our YouTube has officially launched. If you didn't know, we have YouTube. We've talked about it quite a bunch, quite a bit, quite a bunch. That's a weird way to say it. Anyway, we've talked about it quite a bit. And if you didn't know, we have a YouTube. You can watch this episode right now on YouTube. You can see our faces. You can see Mm -hmm. our outfits. You can see part of our homes. I just got a bike. You can kind of see it in frame. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very excited about it, but I don't have a lock yet, so it is inside for now. Um, what what prompted the purchase of the bike? Is it because you don't want to get snatched on the streets anymore? So you <laughs> need to go fast. <laughs> no, I've always wanted a bike. I I've wanted a bike, especially the last year, and then it was expensive, and I haven't had a job, so I didn't get one. And then the other day, last week, my friend Lauren texted Nick and I and just sent a picture of a bike and said. I'm putting it under Sabrina's name and number for pickup. And I was like, what do you mean? What's happening? And I was sitting working at a coffee shop basically. And I almost like truly broke out into tears. She was getting rid of her bike or she was getting a new bike. So she was giving me her new one. Wait, her new one? I mean, sorry, her old one. Give me her old one. (laughs) It's new for me. It's new to you, yes. I just oh had to gosh, pay for like the tune-up. Mm-hmm. So now I have I a love bike. It. There was and a moment, our- so I picked it up last week. I picked it up and I was riding it home and the wind was blowing through my hair and I truly got emotional. <laughs> I was like, I I'm it. free. I honestly can picture this, this <laughs> happening. I'm so excited for you. I can't believe you Thank didn't you. have a bike when we were in college. I feel like. That was my – I moved yeah. to California thinking, oh, all the Cali kids have beach cruisers. So I immediately – I think my first day of college went with my mom to go get one of those like bikes with the basket. But yeah. then it rusted outside, so it's good that you have yours inside. Well, it will be outside um, once I get the lock. Oh, true. I'll just yep. have to take good At care of it. it. Yeah. Take good, take good care of your bike. I love it. This is like – this is reminding me of a little kid getting a puppy or a bike, and it's like, you have to take really good care of it. You're like, I'm going to take really good care I'm gonna of it. I'm going to take really good care of it. I'm <laughs> so excited. Be great. It's well, my so baby. Tell me more about the bike. I mean, I can't really see I much don't of know it anything in the about it. Um, does it have a basket? It does not have a basket, and I want to get a basket. I tried to put Leia on the seat the other day, and she did not like it. Um, Would she go in the basket, though? Well, that's the plan. 
Right. Because you what can take if her on I'm, adventures. <gasps> I'm that girl in LA who's riding around with her cat in her basket on her bike. Yes. <laughs> I love it. And honestly, I just got even Leia more excited. Will love this because she wants to be. She, she does. She looks outside all the time. She's very much Little Mermaid. Like, I want to be where the people are. <laughs> like, that is Leia. She's constantly trying to have yard time. So I, I have been like taking her, her outside a lot. So, yeah, I'm curious. She'd either really like it or be very scared. So we'll have to play it by ear. But if I get a basket, maybe I can put her in her, like, carrier just to mm-hmm. make sure she's safe. And then, like, eventually we'll warm up and then she can be free in the basket. Just ride. Yeah, like a little clip-in. Maybe – I'm sure they have. Should like be my ET jacket <gasps> things. Yeah, right. I'm also picturing. I don't Corinne. know why this came to my mind, but I was just picturing like the different, like you know how most people have little bells that go like bring bring like as you're trying mm-hmm. to pass, and then there's the like old school like honk honk. But I feel like <laughs> there should be one. Maybe this already exists, but there should be one where you get to choose whatever you want. Basically, like Tesla. You know how they have like fart noises and like weird stuff. Oh, I didn't know that. They should have ones for. For bike bells because I feel like a really good one for you would be Voldemort screaming. Oh, I'm not a <laughs> that I would feel like be I would perfect. terrify people <laughs> on the street. I would thought you were gonna say like Alea's meow. <laughs> well, she'll probably you'll you'll have her live, so she'll yeah. probably be doing it. Yeah, well, I'll have her. This live. is exciting. You'll have to I know, I'm do, really take excited. us on your adventures. I will. I should set up like biking. a little thing on my handlebar and I'll put my phone there and I'll just like, you'll see me crying because I'll be so happy. <laughs> live, live streaming. You do it on, on TikTok and people will like throw the little, the sunglasses on you and you'll just be vibing. I, I did it. get a helmet too and it's like cute and it matches. Okay. It's actually like the exact same color as my water bottle because this is my favorite color apparently. Is that lavender? And I can't really tell right. From it's um blue. It's bluish, oh. like baby blue. Baby blue. Yeah. I think you like the like powdery colors. I do like a powdery lavender color. Lavender and baby blue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That seems to be. You know me well. Towards. <laughs> They're really pretty. So. <laughs> Wait, well, anyway. I've never been to my house in Vermont, but my childhood bedroom. <gasps> no, I My parents haven't. repainted. It used to be pink. And then I painted one wall purple. And then my dad painted the rest blue. It was it was a mod podge of things. Throughout what the I love Now that. it's like the prettiest it's almost white but it's it's lavender like it's got like this very slight subtle shade of purple that comes through and it is beautiful wow i feel like i haven't noticed that we because we've recorded from there before why have i never noticed it probably i'm sure because either when we record i'm sitting on my bed or in the desk section of Mm. the room that my parents set up for me when i'm working from home there and it's right in front of the window so i think the sun when it's through video, I think it looks a little bit white, but it's very gotcha. Pretty. Oh, so pretty. Yes. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome. This is an encounters episode of Two Girls, mm-hmm. One Ghost, meaning we are reading your ghost stories right back to you. And um, it's the best. We love it. Yeah. And Corinne, I think you started last time. So, oh, okay. So I then would love to start. Yeah. Okay. There's one that I put that's like sweet. So I should save that for the end. Oh, I, I did see you made a note of that. And I was like, wow, how very unlike Sabrina. I know, right? To make a note okay. of this. Well, I will start with a very on-brand Sabrina story. And it is okay. from our listener, Maddie. And it is called, An Alien Abducted My Mom. <laughs> also, I love how Maddie opens this. Hey, little lads. <laughs> <laughs> little lads. I'm a little lad who loves berries and cream. <laughs> Berries and cream, berries and cream. Berries and cream. (laughs) Okay. Hey, little lads. My name's Maddie. I've sent you a couple of experiences before, but I was talking to my mom about your podcast and she told me this story. Before I start, I wanted to say how much I love you guys. You get me through my work days and have informed me about so much. You are my little friends that live in my phone. LOL. (laughs) We're little lads. We're just the littlest of lads. Living the littlest of lads. Uh, and now I'm just picturing like us stuck in the phone being like, let me out. <laughs> Every what time if, someone drops their phone and there's a crack, like you see little tiny fingers coming through and trying to oh, pull it so apart. So creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Very stranger things. 
I was going to say, it makes me think um, very like Black mirror the episode where it's kind of like the Alexa, but she's living inside the Alexa and can't get out. Oh, I haven't seen that one. I think, am I making this up? I think that's the thing. No, but I'm imagining right. that every time someone listens to us on their devices, a part of our consciousness gets stuck in their phone. Kind of like severance. Through. Yes. Ooh, yes. it's like we have a million different tentacles coming out of us. I don't like that. <gasps> Sick. I like it. Sick. We're everywhere. Maybe if, if we like re remarket it as like silk threads coming out, then I'm into it. Oh, that's tentacles. beautiful. Yeah. Then it's pretty. And then we're just like, oh, we're But pretty. have you ever we seen share ourselves with everyone? Oh, that's nice. But have you ever seen my octopus teacher? Because that made me love octopi and I am all about the tentacles. I haven't seen it. I feel like I should. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Okay, back to Maddie's story. Uh, she says, I'm super grateful I haven't experienced much paranormal in my life because your stories are scary. But here's my story or my mom's story. Before my mom met my dad and had me, she was married and had my two sisters. When my mom was recently divorced, she moved from Ann Arbor, Michigan to Brooklyn, Michigan, a small town with a lake. She bought a small house on that lake and said it was wonderful and she loved living there, besides the fact that the town was a little odd. She said that along with the beautiful scenes, there was a lot of dark energy, lots of weird people doing weird stuff like rituals and sex stuff, lol, and culty shit. Why not? Why not? My mom didn't move into the house alone she bought. So she moved in with my sister, who at the time was about 16, and since my other sister had moved out, it was just the two of them. My sister, like me, sleepwalks and has weird sleeping habits, like waking up with dirt in her bed from leaving the house while sleepwalking. No. No, 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 no. It's so I scary. also just read Verity, so now I'm thinking of oh, locking yes. yourself in into the Ugh. bedroom. Sleepwalking? Ugh, no. Well, she does say, my mom had to booby trap the front door to prevent her from leaving. Right. As yeah, all of that dangerous. was going on, my mom started renovating the upstairs to turn it into a bedroom. She flipped all the floors, nails facing up, so in the next day, she could start replacing them, and my sister and her got ready for bed. My sister had a room across from my mom, and there were doors, and their doors were open so that if my sister started sleepwalking, my mom could catch her in the act. Once my sister started to fall asleep, she felt weird but couldn't put a finger on it. So she went to bed and at 2.45 a.m. woke up because she was really cold. She rolled over and realized she was not in her bed. She was at the very end of the room upstairs that had all the boards tipped up. She looked up to see three, three figures talking to her, but she couldn't understand what they were saying. And then they disappeared. Now, my sister is a very Houdini sleepwalker, but there is no possible way for her to have made it across those boards while sleeping. They were also all nails up. Ugh. The next morning, my sister went downstairs and told my mom all about the situation, and my mom felt really weird. My mom had slept through the whole night, not once hearing my sister leave her room or go up the old creaky stairs. So she called her best friend, who is very connected to the spiritual world and sees and understands things that most people don't. And her friend asked my mom to check her wrist to see if there was any markings on it. My mom pulled up her wrist and there was a red mark all the way around her wrist. Her friend explained that this was probably an abduction and that sometimes aliens will distract and play with the children so they can steal the parents. No! Super creepy. <laughs> I was literally about to ask you, wait, the mom's wrist or the daughter's wrist? Because I, the I was moms. confused. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Ew. Oh, my God. What the fuck? Also, why why distract you with the kid situation? Why why is that even needed? I feel like they can get no away idea. with abductions without anyone knowing. Right. Like, you don't have to move Maddie's sister into another room unless they were trying to trap her. I don't know. Yeah. After ooh, ooh. after my mom told me the story, I knew Sabrina would love to hear it. And you were right, Maddie. Sorry if it's long. I just couldn't stop typing. It is not. It's perfect. 
Also, I'll ask my mom if she's ever had any other experiences and I'll send some more stories about Brooklyn, Michigan. It is so wild there. I wonder if there are any stories of why. Anyway, hope you guys are doing well and I'll probably write to you soon again. Love, Maddie. Okay, well, here's <laughs> one thing that concerns me as well uh -huh. is the fact that the woman who they reached out to, the family friend or, or this, this woman who is spiritual, the fact that she understood what was going on and was able to identify that pattern and then ask if there was a marking means that she's seen this before. Right, right. Also, like, is that like a hand mark around her wrist? Yeah. Or is it like, you know, like when you go to the hospital, you get like the wristbands? Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's like a weird alien tag. Right. Or do they have tentacles and their their hands <gasps> aren't actual fingerprints. It's just like a tentacle looping tentacles. up around you like a little vine and sucking you off. Ooh, that's also very Stranger Things of you. Very. Yes. Just in, so in any like jungle movie too. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah. And it's also – I mean, the fact that she doesn't have any weird memories of it is probably good. Yeah. But Maddie's sister, it's also weird because it's like, it's like the aliens knew that she sleepwalks so they could get away with this. They're like, oh, she'll just think that she sleptwalked here. But there's no way she would have been able to climb across all these wooden boards that had nails up without hurting right. herself. And, and it's strange that they would put her through such a dangerous and like, rigorous setting like the like why yeah. not just have her sleepwalk out into the backyard or something and wake up with a little Ooh. bit of mud on her face what if all of her sleepwalking is alien related oh my god every single time she sleepwalks her mom's actually getting abducted holy or shit, she's getting abducted i don't what know if that's all sleepwalking what if sleepwalking doesn't <gasps> actually exist oh naturally god. for humans and every single time someone sleep sleepwalks it has to do with an alien abduction karen you're on to something i well you came up with it <laughs> we're both well and now i'm starting to think back to all the times i've slept walked how many times have you done it oh gosh i've done it two or three times that i know of in my adulthood there's there's sometimes where i don't actually know if i've done it but i'm like suspicious of myself for having done it hmm. and then as a child i probably did it under 10 times that's still a lot very high functioning like i would yeah i tried to run outside of my grandparents house one time sleepwalking and i oh would just gosh. there was one time when i woke up and i was in my parents bedroom standing in front of their tv just kind of like rocking back and forth <gasps> you're so like poltergeist tv yeah mm -hmm. i know <laughs> I'm like otherwise. not surprised. Like this makes so much sense <laughs> for you, but it is also still terrifying. I mean, I feel like there have been times too where I would sleepwalk and go wake up my parents. So I don't mm. think – like I, my mom said that one time – or there were two different occasions where I, I went and got her. And one time I asked her to pick all of the fuzz out of my bed. And the other time I was like, I have to go to the bathroom. You have to watch the horses. So I was like having her babysit my horses while I peed. So like they're, they're not getting abducted. I'm going right. and grabbing them and having them be yeah. my guardians of the horses or yeah. You're my, just my home bed service. Very vivid dreams. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I think wow. I just I just debunked our own theory. That's okay. That's okay. That, that's the point of we propose hypotheses. We do the experiments. We talk about them. So basically the, the next step is to ask and poll other people. So if you've slept walk, tell us your experiences so we can try to figure this out. Right. And yeah. what's the name of the person who sent us this? this Maddie. Again? Maddie. Maddie. I think we need to hear from you. If this ever happened again to your sister sleepwalking and if there were ever marks discovered again. Because this Maddie be also said that she also sleepwalks. Oh my God. So we need to hear <laughs> family. All of this. Yeah. Ooh. Oh my gosh. I can only imagine the fear that her mom experienced. You have so much concern for your daughter. Yeah. And then it turns out you're getting abducted. 
And then you're like, well, what, what do and I do now? here I am over here just being like, well, I'm jealous. How do I make this happen to me? Maybe Leia is your protector and she just stands at the window. She just sprawls out, takes the whole thing, watches I all night long. I promise she's not protecting me. <laughs> oh, Love that little day. girl. But no. No. All right. What do you have? Okie dokie. Let me pull one up. I think I did have a positive one in here, but I honestly can't remember. I didn't I didn't mark it. So we're gonna get we're gonna get like a little dealer's choice here. I love it. And we're gonna start with one that I do not think is positive. It is from Joe <laughs> and it is called Witnessing a Murder Through Astral Travel question mark. Yeah, that does not sound positive, Grim, but it no. sounds right up our alley. <laughs> okay. Hello again. My emails to you guys seemed to have evolved into my way of keeping record of these things. So sorry, not sorry for the several emails already and the likely future bombardment of more. That's actually a brilliant idea to just keep it in email. Where are journal? Where are your journal? Yeah. Dear Doctor. And happy to be. Yeah. So I contemplated for a while whether or not I should send this one. It was terrifying, of course, but in reality could be fairly easily brushed off as just a dream, especially by anyone who is even a little bit of a skeptic. But it's been over a year since it happened and it affected me enough that I still think about it and it makes me really anxious and incredibly uncomfortable. So here it goes. Normal night. I go to sleep. No alcohol or LSD to be had. (laughs) I've had lucid dreams my whole life and I dream every single night and every time I do, I'm aware that I'm dreaming and generally I have very good control over everything. I can count on one hand the amount of times that that hasn't been the case. And this night in particular, I dreamt that I was a woman living in an apartment with her husband. I was absolutely 100% sure that I was this woman. No lucidity, no self-awareness. This dream was my life. I was a pretty young woman with strawberry blonde hair, definitely not what I look like, and I remember what my husband looked like, mid-30s, tall, short, dark hair, and glasses, definitely not what my partner looks like either. We lived in a large city. We had a neighbor, an elderly woman who was the guardian of her grandson, a boy around eight with a physical disability that made it difficult for him to walk, and we babysat him sometimes. These details didn't even show up physically in the dream. I just knew them. Whoa. In the dream, that is really interesting to think about that. Like, you're not even observing what's currently happening, but you also have all of these memories and understanding. Yeah, your thoughts. Which makes me think, I mean, I don't know the rest of the story yet, but it makes me think past life. Right? Oh. But keep reading. let Let me read on. Yes. Okay. In the dream, my husband and I were in bed. He was asleep and I wasn't. Our room was dark and I felt something tug on the blankets a little bit. And I sat up. I leaned over the bed just a little bit to see what it was. And suddenly a very large humanoid but weirdly misshapen hand with unnaturally long fingers reached up from the darkness and began to claw at me. It grabbed at my arms. It ripped at my clothing, trying to drag me to the edge of the bed. I fought back so hard, in fact, that I could hear and feel the finger bones of the hand snapping and breaking as I attempted to pry it off of me. And let me tell you, that is not a feeling I think I will ever forget. I could feel it so vividly, the most vividly I've ever experienced in a dream. And it hurt. I was crying. I was screaming at my husband to wake up and help me. And finally, he did. And he rushed over to try to pull the hand off of me, which, by the way, still had not revealed its source. It was too dark but it seemed like it was coming from underneath the bed. I felt its grip finally begin to release, and I pulled away from it and retreated to the middle of the bed. My husband, however, was unfortunately grabbed in the process. I watched him tumble off the end of the bed, and after a slight scuffle, it was quiet. I slowly crept back towards where both him and the hand had disappeared, and I called out to him. After a second, I heard him reply, I'm okay. I think it's gone. He popped back up from the darkness next to my bed, adjusted his PJs, and asked, Are you okay? I was about to answer, about to rush to him for comfort, when I looked down and noticed that his arms and his hands were just mm, slightly too long. I looked back at him in horror, 
But before I could react in any way, he lunged at me, wrapped his hands around my neck, and I swear to you, I experienced dying as this woman. (gasps) I felt myself lose consciousness, and I seemed to float out of my body. And then I wasn't her anymore. Or maybe I was, but the perspective switched at that moment from being this woman to seeing her dead body on a bed, and weirdly enough, her husband's dead body as well on the floor next to the bed. It was daytime now as well, and the room was filled with inappropriately pleasant sunlight. And now, probably the weirdest part, she started speaking to me like I was a friend who she was just casually telling an anecdote to. And that is how I died, she told me, super nonchalantly. They ruled it a murder-suicide. I'll consider myself the lucky one, though. My husband never got his soul back. (laughs) Can you not do that? (laughs) <laughs> Leia gave you away. <laughs> this is like Maybe the worst went, time. Went all the way outside to scare. Her. <laughs> the, the, the door coat, the door thing went off. Yeah, I was just cracking up. I couldn't contain myself. <laughs> I really wanted to scare you guys. You were so close, and honestly, it was a very scary part of the story. So. I know, and also Leia, Leia kind of like looked freaked out. She was sitting by the stairwell and was like, Meow. like she didn't, <laughs> she was not a fan of it. <laughs> oh, Ugh. Nick is Ugh. trying to scare you with everything you purchased to scare him. So actually, yes. Yeah, so that doll I bought with intention of hiding it around the apartment to scare Nick. And I hid it in under my shoes because I was like, I haven't figured out where, what to do with it yet. And he texted me when I was out of town and was like, what the heck is this thing? <laughs> and so now he's been like hiding it under my pillow. I put it in his bedside table, like in the drawer. <laughs> We've just Wait, been hiding it around. This is a fun game. It's just like, where, <laughs> where will the haunted dolly be? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put her in the fridge next. I don't know. Ooh, keeping things uh, alive. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I will I will admit I I was very like like this for the last maybe minute of that story. So whew, okay. Okay. Let's pick it back All up. All right. Well I will repeat the last sentence just so that okay. you can Thank be you. refreshed. Okay. And now probably the weirdest part. She started speaking to me like I was a friend. Someone that she was just casually telling an anecdote to. And that is how I died, she told me super nonchalantly. They ruled it a murder-suicide. I'll consider myself the lucky one, though. My husband never got his soul back. And (sighs) what the ever-loving fuck does that mean? What? That was it. I woke up after that. Super uncomfortable, obvs. And this was a weird one. And I was looking forward to hearing your guys' thoughts on it. Was it someone else's murder that they wanted me to see? My own death from a past life? Was there ever actually an entity or did her husband actually do it? And it was just like a metaphor for him being a monster or something. I didn't bother looking up any news stories because unfortunately, this is a super common situation and it probably would not have led me anywhere. And also, I kind of don't want to know. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed reading my trauma. See y'all on the other side. Joe. Joe, I feel like you nailed all of the possible theories. I don't know. I I was so inclined to think past life, but it's also weird. Like, what if there are other planes in this world that are just, like, so paranormally active, like, more than ours? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it feels – outside of this podcast it can feel a little silly to be like yes a monster reached up and murdered the two of them right. and wore the man as a skin suit before killing the woman but <laughs> we've heard <laughs> but we've heard a lot of stories and seen a lot of tales that that have similar themes so i don't really know what the hell happened but i mean what the fuck <laughs> I mean, here's here's the thing like the the woman, whoever this woman is, that, yeah, that showed Joe or or Joe remembering their own past life as right. this woman. The woman did say that her husband never got his soul back, which so it does me make think you think it was demon ripped from him, 
Right. Yeah. Oh, just like the image of like all of this visually is so hard to just conceptualize because it's inhuman. But the way that Joe explained when she, the woman in that sh- Joe was in this, I, I mean, whatever it is, dream, had the hand reaching onto her and then her husband tried to save her and then disappeared like under the bed. It almost like makes me think of it being sucked into like a dark portal. Right. And then to see him stand up and be like, I'm okay and have longer than human arms. Oh, it's just so creepy. I know. The last part maybe just discredits my my theory here, but I'm almost picturing it as if if this was a scenario that happened in real life. And these two people were laying on the bed and this happens to the woman. I'm almost picturing it not as necessarily a monster's hand truly coming out, but rather it's like when a spirit touches you and like Mm. you won't see anything, but like your shirt will be tugged. Maybe that's now that they've passed on, they can see what the demon actually looked like. But what if it was just that? What if it was just like an unseen force kind of ripping into Uh, people? And that's why maybe her husband was – I mean, I would hope that anyone would try to help the other person, but like maybe he did lack a little bit of self-preservation in an attempt to help her because perhaps he thought yeah. she was like, you know, having a seizure or a night terror. Mm. And he was just like putting himself fully right there next to the demon in the portal being like, oh no, let me help you. I'm also picturing just like whatever this entity is under the bed, arms reached out on either side of the bed. Like that's how long the yeah. arms are. You look like you're about to do the YMCA. YMCA. <laughs> Maybe that's, that's what the demons song are that doing. To, yeah. Yeah, it's just you happen to be in the wrong wrong spot. Yeah. The if M you get- the M caught you. <laughs> Gotta make sure you're not in the not Don't in the, get way of the demon Mm-mm. YMCA. Yikes. No. I mean I, I don't know what to think of it, but it's incredibly <laughs> vivid and incredibly scary. And Joe, very. I hope that no other disturbing memories come to you like this. But perhaps one day you'll get answers. Just unfortunately yeah. not from us. <laughs> and I'm glad that it wasn't like a weird premonition and that it wasn't Joe as Joe is now. You know, it was like a mm, different mm-hmm. life. Because then it, right. now Joe doesn't have to live their life thinking, oh no, this is going to happen to me. True. It is really interesting, though, what Joe brought up about having all of these women's memories and knowledge and thoughts. I feel yeah. Like that's, I mean, despite the the scariness and horror of this email, that's something that I think is going to stick with me for a long time. Thinking so fascinating. That, yeah. That that could possibly happen, whether it's a spirit giving you that or whether it's astral projection past or past life. Yeah. Super interesting. I was saying – on, I think on Discord, I was talking to some people about our YouTube and I don't know why I'm struggling through this sentence. But basically on Discord, I was chatting with some people about our YouTube and I mentioned that I light the candle kind of with hopes and in- – oops, my watch just got sucked to the metal of here. <laughs> but with the, with the hopes and intention that this will like one day do something wild and will capture some paranormal activity <gasps> – and someone oh. made the suggestion, and I need to figure out how to do this or, like, buy something for it, to hang my pendulum, too. Because maybe oh there will be scary. some sort of, like, communication. Yeah. So I'm going to look into, like, little wood hanging devices or, okay. or something. That's a good idea. Have it there. But, yeah. I don't know. What else should we? I'm thinking. Yeah. What else should we do? Should we? We need something on your end, too. I mean, I'll just put – the only thing is that if I put anything up here, Leia will jump up and knock it off, so. Oh, okay. Well, just on, on my end, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have a cat-free home. I do. <laughs> okay. All right. What do you have for I us? have a longer story from our listener, Tiffany, and I am excited about it. Okay. Okay. It is I'm called A too. Demon – a shaman, and a little boy ghost. Oh, wow. I will start out with the obligatory, thank you so much for making my week a little more weird in a good way. 
With as messed up as the world is right now, it feels great to be able to look forward to every Wednesday and hearing stories that may share similarities with mine. This is a longer story. Apologies, but buckle up because it gets wild. I'm going to change the names in this story just to protect their privacy. My experience started during the summer earlier on in the pandemic when a friend of mine, Anna, posted something on her story about her partner and her breaking up. I was in the midst of looking for a house in Portland, Oregon, so I figured I might reach out and ask if she was looking for a roommate. She said yes, and we set up a time to go check out the house. When I arrived, I did feel a little off about it, but I decided to ignore that as Anna had done such a great job with decorating. I also really needed a place to live and finding affordable two bedrooms was extremely uncommon. The house was a big house on the corner split into three levels. It was built in the early 1920s and our apartment was in the middle of the house. So the second level. The landlord slash homeowner lived downstairs and a couple lived above us. Before my dog and I moved in, I went over to the house to paint my room with my partner as it was an awful shade of beige. I went for a white, something a little brighter feeling, and Anna was keeping us company in the empty room on the floor while we were painting. We all started talking about the spooky stuff that had happened to us all separately in the past. That's when she casually mentioned that she had felt something in this house. She said that she never got a malevolent feeling from it, and basically any time she felt something, she would sage and the feeling would go away. I was surprised she didn't mention it beforehand, but at that point, I had already invested $80 worth of paint and given my prior house notice, so I was kind of in it for the long haul. (laughs) Sigh. I am a graphic designer, so I work from home. This was during the pandemic, so I was home a lot, like most of us. Anna would go into work from about 8 a.m. until around 4 or 5 p.m., and I was there a lot by myself. It all started happening pretty quickly. The first thing that happened was when I was putting my dogs on a leash to go outside. I was kind of in my own little world, just thinking, not really thinking about anything around me. And all of a sudden, I heard a man's voice, clear as day, just say, hey. I turned around, startled, because it sounded like the voice was no more than two feet behind me. I yelled, hello? And no one said anything. (laughs) I checked the house. No one was there. At this time, there weren't any men outside. I checked. Really weird. So I texted Anna and told her about it, and she just responded with, weird. (laughs) I... (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I convinced myself that must have just been somebody outside, or maybe it was my imagination, like we tend to do. I was in my room a week or two later getting everything unpacked and settled, Again, I was in my own little world, in my head, thinking about what I needed to do that day or something. My room was across the hall from the kitchen where Anna had a Bluetooth speaker. Out of nowhere, the Bluetooth speaker flipped on by itself and was turned on to AM or FM, but it was just loud static. Even though it spooked me, at that time I wasn't really thinking about anything paranormal, more just that it's an old house and it could have been something electrical. I walked over to the speaker, which I had never used before, and realized that this was really strange because not only did you have to flip the switch of the device on the back, but you also had to press down either Bluetooth, AM, or FM on the front. So it was a two-step process to turn on the device. I flipped the speaker off, went back into my room, and as soon as I got into my room, it turned on by itself again. Mm. At this point, I was a little freaked out, but still trying to convince myself that it was an electrical issue, so this time I unplugged it from the wall. For context, I would like to mention that I lost my grandmother in 2019. She and I were very close. So, things were pretty chill until Christmas Eve night when I took a picture of my dog when I was laying in bed. His head was on my leg. I mean, I have about a million photos of my dog on my phone, so this was nothing out of the norm. I didn't feel any presence or anything like that. I just took the picture. But when I went to look at the picture, however, I immediately saw a silhouette at the foot of the bed standing by the window looking at me. Ooh, ooh, before taking the picture though, so there's no evidence. No, 
No, it was in the picture. Oh, I thought it was like when when setting up for the photo, you see it in the viewfinder. There oh. is evidence. I do think it says when I looked at the picture. So I think. Oh, yeah. ooh, ooh. I, we need that photo. Actually, let's see. Um, yeah, we, we need that photo. I think we, we, she sent a couple other photos, but not those. Okay. I got full body chills and was filled with an overwhelming sense of fear. I just started to cry. I zoomed further in on the picture so there was an outline of a person. I couldn't make out if they were a man or a woman, presumable pronouns here. The figure had short hair combed to the side. You could see the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, and even the eyebrows. There was no facial expression, which almost made it creepier. It was just looking at me blankly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was a blank stare. That was more of like a threatening stare. What? Okay, this is blank. <laughs> Empty. Yeah, a little more like okay. yeah, dead eye. A part of me was like, maybe this is my grandmother going to check in on me because it's Christmas Eve. She loved the holidays, so that added up. However, as I looked at the image, the more I realized that there was something else in the picture – to the bottom right of the figure around the elbow, there was an inhuman-looking face, which was one of the creepiest things I've ever seen. Oh. It looked like a wolf mixed with a baboon. It had an elongated face with big almond-shaped eyes that were slanted and long, and it had a long, long nose. It was also what – it also had what at that angle looked like two big horns that were almost like a ram's. Both entities were just – gray and white in scale, no color, just see-through. Doesn't this sound like Satan? It kind of sounds like the yes. devil and how the devil is depicted in a mm -hmm. lot of imagery. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a little yeah. bit goat, beast sort of Demon. situation. Demon. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> After I took a second to register what I was seeing, I jumped up and went into the kitchen where my roommates were for confirmation. At this point, my roommate and her boyfriend had gotten back together, so there was so he was there to split the rent and make it more affordable. We will call him Ben. I tried to approach this with no influence on them. I just said, "Hey, look at this picture to see if they noticed." Immediately, Ben zoomed in on the inhuman-looking figure. He looked at me and said, "What is that? What is it?" with a startled tone of voice. I said, I have no idea, but look at the other thing. He zoomed in on that and said, oh, I saw that right away, but I'm not really worried about that. I'm worried about this other thing. First of all, how could you see two things and not be worried about one? Right. Well, I guess, I, I'd be like terrified about both. Concerning. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Anna looked at it too and wasn't feeling too much into it. But I think she's the kind of person that's like, if you feed into it, it could make it worse. After that, shit really hit the fan. Almost every night after that, I would wake up at 3 a.m. on the dot feeling the sense of dread, the kind that you will talk about so much. I'd have an undeniable feeling that something was watching me from where my dresser was on the side of the bed that I slept on. It was so crazy because it was almost like I could pinpoint the exact location where it was standing but couldn't see anything with the naked eye. I didn't sleep with the light off for months and months because that picture really jarred me. I started to have sleep paralysis episodes almost every night without fail. Before that, I'd only experienced it once or twice, and it was nothing like the episodes that I was experiencing in this house. I had trained myself to keep my eyes closed and be able to identify when they were happening. I'd just say to myself, it's just sleep paralysis. It's okay. Just keep your eyes closed, which worked until... They turned auditory. Once, there was an angry male voice behind me screaming things into my ear like, also, this is just curse warning if you have children listening, even though this whole this whole story is terrifying. We mark explicit, so that's if true, your kids okay. are listening, that's on you. <laughs> that's on you. <laughs> okay, there was an angry male voice behind me screaming things into my ear like, you're such a bitch, you're such a fucking bitch, fuck you, over and over. Another standout episode was I accidentally opened my eyes for this, for this experience. There was a woman hovering over me, 
singing this really creepy song and laughing. There was also a man holding my feet down at the end of the bed staring at me. I closed my eyes and convinced myself that it would go away to ignore it, and eventually I came to and was able to wake up and move again. These episodes were terrifying. I didn't want to go to sleep. The energy in that house completely shifted at night. This is horrifying. I know. Horrifying. I know. I got real heebie-jeebies thinking about someone standing over and like holding your feet down. That's such an aggressive And the move. woman hovering over her, like the combo. Incredibly fiddle. threatening. Right. It's like a whole team of demons or spirits or whoever the hell is, is in this home attacking. Do not like it. Anyway, continuing on, I know at this point you're probably about to say, get the fuck out. However, I knew I was going to make a cross-country move to North Carolina in the new near future. I didn't know when. I was saving up for it, but it would more than likely be within the next six months to a year. I could not see myself moving twice, let alone being a cross-country, let alone doing a cross-country move in one year. So one morning, I walked into our sunroom, which is on the second floor. We used it as our studio slash workspace. My roommate was a painter, and it's where I kept my desk. As it was an old house and during winter, the room was really cold in the morning. Every morning, I would walk in, turn on the space heater, leave the room, continue on with my morning, and when I was finally finished drinking my coffee, making breakfast, showering, the room was warm enough for me to work in it. On this particular morning, I opened the door and was in shock. I saw two handprints, a nose print, and cheek prints pressed against the window. The two handprints were about where your ear would be on the window. So my immediate question was, who the hell would look out a window like that? And my other question was, why would this person choose the only window that has a giant cactus right below it? You definitely would get pricked by it if you walked close enough to look out like that. You could literally stand in any other window that they were about because there were about 15 to 20 and not get pricked by a giant cactus. My logical side of my brain was like, okay, maybe this has been here for a long time, or maybe my roommate just looked out the window like a weirdo. So I texted her a picture of it, and she was like, holy shit, what the hell is that? I said, I don't know. It was here when I walked in this morning. You didn't do it before you left for work? She told me she thought it looked really unsettling and that she did not do it. Needless to say, I scrubbed the shit out of the window to remove any remaining un, uh, natural oil or anything that could be on the window causing this to happen and moved on with my day. I think there's a photo of this, which we can look it out after. Okay. My roommate's boyfriend was home a lot, but he kept to himself and wore his headphones around the house. We did have a couple conversations about the fact that he had always been really afraid of the closet in the living room. He told me that before I moved in, he would sage it all the time and it never stayed shut. He also told me that Anna had some really spooky experiences, but she definitely left those out when she was initially telling me about the fact that she would feel a presence sometimes. I was continuing working as usual, trying to ignore the fact that I was terrified of this house. My fear would definitely increase at night. I didn't want to close my eyes when I would wash my face. So much so that I started getting ready for bed around 5 p.m. because I felt so vulnerable in the bathroom with my eyes closed. I'm 31 years old. This was not like me. I moved out of my parents' house when I was 18 years old, and I've lived in many houses as a renter. Basically a new house every year, and I had never felt this way in any house. I have had previous experiences in an old house when I lived in Charleston that were unexplainable, however... This feeling that I was having in this house was a new sense of fear for me. One day, all of the lights in the house were flickering. Every single light. Even my desk light, which was brand new. We had a text thread with the neighbor that lives upstairs and our landlord slash homeowner who was downstairs. Nobody said anything about this all day. So I didn't want to be the one to bring it up either. I already felt a little crazy because most of the things that were happening in this house were happening to me. So I kind of just dealt with the flickering lights and the headache that was brought on with it. At night, Ben and I were in the kitchen. We had string lights, string lights strung above back and forth along the ceiling. He was cooking and I was sitting at the table talking with him. He turned to me and said, oh my God, this is like really starting to hurt my eyes. What is going on with these lights? I was like, I don't know. And then I decided to talk to it. Probably the worst decision I could have made. I looked up at the lights and said, 
Hey, can you cut that out? It's starting to hurt our eyes. The lights immediately stopped flickering. I ran into the studio where Anna was painting and said, oh my God, the lights just turned off. The lights just stopped flickering in the kitchen when I asked them to. Just when I said that, the lamp that was behind her started flickering and we both looked at each other so freaked out. <laughs> this is like the upside down. Yeah. But like truly de demons communicating and not will. Right. Um, and also a actual person, not written television. Like this yeah. is real life. <laughs> yeah, this is real life. <laughs> One morning after that, I walked into the studio again to get warmed up for my work day. Lo and behold, they were handprints and face prints again. I ran and got Ben. I didn't show him the time before because I convinced myself that maybe it was there from before they had moved in or something. But we put our hands up to it and they were child-sized. A few nights later, Anna came. I just put my feet up. I can't <laughs> put them on the ground. Right I know. Now. I'm I'm moving a lot too because this is really – it's Ooh. just like – when you're uncomfortable makes from a you story, uncomfortable. it makes your, your whole body – yeah, I'm like, oh. Yeah. Touching myself to make sure I'm still here and nothing's attacking me. <laughs> a few nights later, Anna came to me and said, I don't mean to freak you out more than you already are, but the other night I woke up at 3 a.m. to use the bathroom. As I was washing my hands, it was almost like someone ran through the beaded curtain behind me that we have hanging in the doorframe of the closet. She said, I left the beaded strands on your aloe plant that was – right outside of the closet to show you that they got stuck when this happened. That night, she proposed a group sage. So we all saged the house that night together saying, we need you to respect our space and we'll respect you, etc. Maybe not saying the right things, but we just wanted to be able to coexist. After we saged, my roommates told me how better they felt. How much better they felt. But I didn't feel any different, but decided to try and be positive. Then we went into their room and I went to let out my dog. All I said was, come on, buddy, let's go upstairs. And both roommates came out and looked concerned. We were being very COVID safe, so no one was allowed in unless we talked about it first. And they both asked if I had a guy over. I was confused. Then they said, we heard a man say something after you did. So basically, a man had said something after I told me, my dog, that we needed to go upstairs. But it's weird because she didn't hear it. Only her roommate and right. boyfriend did. Which is uh, almost opposite of what most of the experiences have been, where she's experiencing right. the most out of everyone. <sighs> this hmm. is like so scary. Okay. A few other things happened here and there before I talked with my friend about all that had been going on. She told me she knew of a shaman in town who had a near-death experience and was the real deal. I was a skeptic because I have felt tricked after paying for psychic sessions. But I decided to connect with him. The fact that he doesn't charge made it more believable for me. But I still wanted to let him tell me what he was sensing when he came to check out the house. So I left out most of what had gone on. I only told him about the picture and I only pointed out the person. I told him that I thought maybe it was my grandmother. When he arrived, he told me that it was in fact not my grandmother. That from the picture, he got a little boy, hence the child-sized hands, and a demon. Cool. A fucking yep. demon. Like, are you kidding? Just one? Because it kind of sounds like more. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a lot. Not just a normal ghost. Great. He told me that the dark entity was controlling the little boy and making him do things to us, oh, mostly no. me, to gain energy. That's no, so sad. save the little boy. Oh, that's so sad. He's probably so scared. That's how they get stronger. He also told me that talking about it in the house is a 100% no-go, only fuels it. So once it knew I could see it and hear it, that's when things spiraled. In shock, I followed him into the house while he further assessed the situation. When we got inside, he instantly told me about a dark presence he was sensing and walked directly to the closet that Ben was afraid of. He put his hand on it and said, this is where it comes from. Then he walked me to my room and said, this is where it stands and watches you sleep at night. This shaman stood in the exact spot that I could feel it at night. This was tenfold validation for me. I finally didn't feel nuts. He pointed to the round mirror I had above my bed and told me that he liked the mirror, that he looked at himself in it. This really threw me. 
That night, I could not sleep there. I had to go to my friend's house to sleep. When she turned off the lights, I sighed in relief. Wow, I thought, this is the first time in months I'll be able to sleep peacefully in the dark. And then something unexplainable happened. I closed my eyes and had this vision, almost, like something was being projected from the back of my eyes. I saw swirling colors and angry, demonic-looking faces. It's the strangest thing I've ever experienced. And keep in mind, I was completely sober. No drugs, nothing. No matter what I tried to think about, the beach, mountains, my dog, nothing worked. Eventually, I fell asleep, and I called the shaman and told him about it. He told me I'm clairvoyant and my energy is bright. Because I've been sleeping in that room for so long, the dark energy was telepathically communicating with me, expressing the anger to me that I wasn't there for it to feed off of. Absolutely what? madness. Oh, oh, that really freaks me out. The <laughs> fact that she she could leave the place and basically escape what is what is bound to that one location. And yet telepathically, it can still move and torment her and be like, come back because I need to eat you. That's yeah. fucked up. It's so fucked up. It's, that goes against our whole like, when in doubt, move out. Move out. I know. Because it will find you. Even if it doesn't move out, it can still <sighs> find you. I hate this. Mm. Mm-hmm. Also, mm-hmm. I wonder where her dog is this whole time. Uh, okay. He also told me These that are there the wasn't any questions. Where, These are. where is the dog? Where is your dog? He also told me there wasn't anything that he could do to cleanse the house and help the little boy spirit move on since it was a split level house. We would have to inform all of the attendants, including the landlord and my roommate. Just, I didn't really want to do that since she'd be staying and I was planning my big move. So I gave my notice to Anna that day. She understood, but she had invested so much time and energy into the house and just wasn't as affected by it. I personally couldn't do it anymore. I put up like 70% of my stuff into storage since I was moving in three months across the country and ended up moving into an ADU or tiny home with no plumbing that was in the backyard of my house. Trust me, I staged all of my shit several times before doing so. My new roommate, we'll call him Zach, believed me fully even though he had no prior experiences. I told him everything about I told him about everything except the vision because I felt crazy about that one. I only told the shaman. I showed him the photo too, and he told me after I showed him the picture prior to me moving in, he had a hard time sleeping. It really freaked him out. After moving in, things were going well for the first week or so, but one night at 3 a.m., my Bluetooth speaker turned on by itself, and I've had it for six years, and it had never done that. I woke up at 3 a.m. for a couple nights after that, Chalking it up to my circadian rhythm just being messed up, I tried to ignore it. Oh my gosh. I know, I'm like trying to do some stretches, move around. I'm sweating onto the seat. So I'm like, oh. I tried to ignore it until I woke up in the middle of the night to a crazy dream. I was in a dark room and couldn't see anything but a round table. There was a light above it, like an interrogation lamp. On the table, I could see a pencil writing by itself on a piece of paper. I walked over to it and saw what looked like a child's handwriting. It read, My name is Aaron. I'm nine years old and... I woke up. My knee-jerk reaction was to cry. I felt so overwhelmed with sadness. Is this the child from the house? I just left him. There was nothing I could do to help. I finally calmed down and was able to go back to sleep. And And just like that, the dream continued. There I was at the table watching the pencil write, Hi, my name is Erin. I'm nine years old and I have been here a really long time. I need your help. No. I woke up again and cried. It felt like a trick. I was so shaken up. It felt so real, so different than any dream I'd ever had. I went inside to make breakfast and my roommate asked if I was okay because I seemed off. I decided to tell him about the dream and the Bluetooth speaker and waking up at 3 a.m., and he reluctantly told me that since I'd move in, since I'd moved in, he was waking up at 3 a.m. and that had never happened to him. I felt terrible. Then he said, there's one other thing. I was like, yeah. He goes, I don't want you to think I'm crazy. Like after everything I told him, I would even think he's crazy, lol. So he said, the other night while I was laying in bed, I had this vision. I was like, what kind of vision? I perked up, waiting for the response. He said, 
There were like all these colors swirling in angry faces, inhuman faces. I stopped him and described the vision I had. And he was like, exactly. How do you know that? And I was like, I've seen it too. I'm calling the shaman to come here and make sure it didn't follow me here. The shaman agreed to come and couldn't explain why my roommate saw the vision. He told us our energies felt good and the house was free of dark energy. We staged it together anyway. When he left, he texted me and asked me what I was feeling around that circular mirror that was above my Bluetooth speaker. This was the speaker the dark energy liked. I probably should have gotten rid of it after he told me that, but mirrors are expensive. So I thought about it and decided it made me feel uneasy. He told me that sometimes mirrors can be portals for spirits to travel through, good or bad, that my energy was like a beacon for this thing. And since it had basically attached itself to that mirror, it was able to travel with it. This explained why he didn't sense anything when he was there. I asked him if I donated it or sold it, would the new owner be affected? And he told me that's not the way it works. It wanted me and my energy. Oh, God. Okay. All right. (laughs) I'm giving up here. What? Yeah. I didn't tell my new roommate about this realization because I didn't want to influence his experience. So I got rid of the mirror and asked about a week later if he had been waking up at 3 a.m. He said, actually, I haven't had any experiences in about a week. Boom. Neither had I. I haven't since, no bad dreams, no sleep paralysis, no waking up at three, and now I'm happy living in North Carolina in my house that was built in the 40s. Best believe I put black tourmaline in the corners of my bedroom and staged my first week here. The the difference in energy is like night and day. I just heard from an old roommate who still lives... I just heard from my old roommate who still lives in the house, and she told me that the banging from the closet has just started, and her dresser drawers have been open when she hadn't open them herself. I don't know how she still lives there, but things are very much still going on in that house. Um, Tiffany says, I attached two photos from the house. I didn't send the scary one because the shaman believes there's dark energy attached to it. If you want to see it, he said I can reach out and he can send it. But I wanted to show the handprints and the other photo is what he believes to be a soul, a dim, sad soul at that. He said, this is what you see when you die. It's black and you're surrounded by these. Oh my God, the handprints. This is very ominous. Oh gosh, that's very clear. (laughs) I don't know what I was expecting, but (laughs) that's very clear. Yeah. Oh, geez. Okay. And then the other one. What what floor are they on? It, it it looks like they're a few stories up too. They were on the second floor. Second floor. I'm not really sure what we're looking at in this one. It looks like a reflection from the candle, but oh, okay. I'm gonna open it up and look as well. Maybe okay. I'll, I'll see something. That's the the sec the second photo I showed said it was supposed to be what the shaman believes to be a soul, a dim sad soul at that. It's what you see oh, when you die. Oh, is it the little, is it the squiggly oh, maybe. line? Like if I, if I zoom in and show, it's. Yeah, maybe that. it's that. It's almost reminding me. It's giving me very like Little Mermaid, Lost Souls. Yeah. Little eel situation with Ursula. Oh my gosh. Perhaps I just it. can't. It's just kind of like squiggles wandering around with Lost Souls. I c- cannot believe that Anna still lives there. And that okay. Well, like, here's the thing: it, it wasn't. It was not after Anna. It sounds like it was after. But Tiffany. now it is. But now it is. Tiffany said at the end that Anna is now experiencing things, and there's banging coming from the closet, and her right. drawers are being opened. Well, it, pro- it probably didn't for a long time. So I mean, Tiffany moved out and has like been in other yeah. places, other apartments. So maybe Anna was like, "Oh God, it was just after Tiffany." Like so focused on Tiffany. I know. And now that it doesn't have this access to her now that the like portal is essentially gone perhaps it is starting to Ugh. come a knock in maybe it went dormant for a little bit or does anna have a new roommate that it's somehow mm. triggering also it just makes me so sad that the demon is controlling this little boy and the, the shaman said there's nothing we can do like and the dream I, i'm sure it was manipulation I believe it, but I also do believe that this little boy has been stuck here for a very long time. Right. He's nine. I know that's the confusing part because like 
if we know demons and hopefully we never actually meet any but but it's the classic thing where like they say the right thing they try to Mm -hmm. appear innocent they're the little old lady they're the child they are doing what they what they think you need to hear or see to trust them and to come back so maybe it was sort of this manipulation where it was like well i'm gonna say all the things that would make tiffany feel bad and like she has to come back and save this little boy but then again (sighs) it could be the little boy like clearly tiffany is very in tune and and clairvoyant and and can yeah make contact more easily than i think she realized with spirits and so maybe she did tap into this thing so unsettling i'm so glad that tiffany has been able to rid it from her life yeah but it's horrifying it's truly I mean, the, I still can't get over the sleep paralysis where the woman was hovering over her singing a creepy tune and the man was holding her legs holding down. Holding her feet down or her legs. Yeah. So creepy. I'm also trying to picture myself. If I didn't have this podcast with you and have experiences <laughs> of my own, I can't imagine moving in with someone, getting so excited to like have a new space and decorate and like make a new friend. And then they're like, by the way, I'm incredibly haunted. Here are my stories. <laughs> and you're like, okay, like – you're a new person. No, like, it's totally okay. believe you. And then they send you a photo of like demons in it. And you're like, what the fuck did I just get into? You can't, you can't break your lease for the most part. I know. You can't. I also really want to see that photo. And I know, I know maybe that's questionable. Let's, let's, I know I was saying, I was going to say, I want to see it too, but I don't want to see it right now because I need things in my life to go well right now. And I think you <laughs> same, do Same, Corinne. Same. You do too. So we're not in a position where we can like take a hit for I can't a take months. on a demon right now. No, you're right. Right. But then I'm like, but when I'm is too the right busy. time to take on a demon? I don't know if that will be in our future. I'm too busy for that right now. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Bad things have been happening to me already. Why not? I'll do. I'll take one for the team, Corinne. That's your. That's your third thing. <laughs> <laughs> so for a photo, t- and the demon gets attached <laughs> to you. So tell me, what's been going on in your life? This is my conversation with my therapist. Well, um, I was grabbed by a homeless man. I got stuck in an elevator, and now I have a demon. Yep. <laughs> How are you? Those are your the two truths and a lie, but it's all true. They're all true. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh wait, sorry. What was the game again? Wait, I was supposed to lie about something. <laughs> Okay. No, my my uh, life's just really crazy right now. This is all true. <laughs> should I should I say my kind of sweet one now? Oh, that's nice. Maybe that's a nice palate cleanser. Right? Break it up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. okay. I will read this then. This is from Este. Este? E S T E. Este? Este? How would you say it, Sabrina? Este? Este? Okay. Hello, ladies. I have a wholesome story for you guys. I, thankfully, knock on wood, haven't had an evil spooky encounter, and (laughs) I do not wish to. (laughs) However, listening to your podcast religiously has made me scared of the dark. (laughs) My sister's younger boyfriend of four years passed away in a car accident four years ago at the age of 19. It was devastating to say the least. However, this kid totally knew he was going to die young. He got a tattoo that said, all we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. Like, Whoa. what kind of teenager would resonate with that so much and get it tattooed? Side note, one of my friends on Instagram who didn't know him posted a photo with this as a caption on the second anniversary of his death, which I totally think was a sign from him. Oh, that's so sweet. He had dropped out of college and quit every job that he had after a few months. He spent his days playing games and hanging out with his friends, just living life as best he could, as if he knew that he didn't have the future here to worry about or plan for. This encounter we had with him from the other side was lighting paper lanterns on his birthday, which was about a month after he passed. It was nighttime at the park, so it was completely dark besides the streetlights. My mom was taking pictures on her cell phone and could come to find, or sorry, and come to find out. Almost every shot that we have has the same green orb in it. More of a green smudge that changes shape in every picture. I'll attach some. 
They seriously take my breath away and I'm so happy he joined us for that. In February last year, my mom had a reading with a psychic medium. Ooh, I just got a really cold, like chilly spot in the middle of my back. I feel like there's like a cold hand pressed on me. <gasps> Weird. Because my AC is off and it's like 80 degrees in here. Okay. okay. Uh, my mom had a reading with a psychic medium and of course he came through. He said that he would be with her on her birthday in May <sighs> and to look for a bird or a feather. Lo and behold, my mom comes down the stairs into the kitchen on her birthday, and there's a large white feather smack dab in the middle of the floor. Oh, she I just couldn't got believe chills. it. She left wow. it there and was going to show my sister when she came downstairs. When my sister came down a few hours later, the feather was gone. So my mom was telling her all about it when she noticed that the feather was now up on the shelf next to his picture and memorial bracelet. My sister is a bit of a skeptic, and so she claimed that maybe the vent had just blown it up there. But I know that he moved it there. I said out loud, hey, man, I want a feather, too. (laughs) And I kid you not, guys, the next day I come down to the kitchen in my house, and there is a tiny white feather next to the dog bowl. I squeal. I could not believe it. I've never seen a (laughs) – I've never seen a feather in my house before, and I haven't since. I don't ever really feel an overwhelming presence like he's here, but I just know that he is, if that makes sense. I had a reading with a psychic medium when I was on vacation last April, and the first thing she said was that she felt a young male and described his car. Yep, that's him. Always hanging out. I know he wants to contact my sister so bad, but her way of coping is ignoring. So she did... She did recently have a reading with the same woman our mom saw last year, but she won't talk about it. Hmm. And then there are some photos. She said, that's all I have for you, ladies. Thanks for reading. Stay spooky. The last pick. There's only two lanterns up there. The green light is in the middle. So I will show a few of the photos. I'm looking at them, too. Okay. (gasps) Oh, Oh, these are so cool. One, you can see the green. Yeah. And then there's there's like five, but I'll show the very last one. So the, the very last one is sky. so and oh, then the, there's in the middle. Trees. Oh. Yeah, and then the green orb, his spirit, in the middle. So freaking cool. I'm also picturing him like jumping into each each uh photo, you know, like they're moving around yeah. taking photos. It's like He's down by the ground, then he's up in the sky, and he's like, oh, oh, oh. Gotta he's everywhere. He's everywhere. Oh, these are wow. so beautiful and so special. Isn't this beautiful? The feathers. He's so active. The, the fact that he's I'm, truly able to, like, give all of these signs and describe ahead of time what he's going to do is just awesome. And I'm so glad I he know. lived life the way that he did. Yeah. It's so tragic. That he died so young. But yeah, I love that he's still there and he's watching over the whole family. Like he's – everyone's had experience with him. And even Mm -hmm. though Este's sister won't talk about what happened in the reading, it does seem like maybe they just needed to have like a, you know, private moment. Right. Right. And it is – yeah, it's hard to lose anybody that you're close to. But I feel like especially at a, at a young age when you, when you have – it's a pivotal moment in your maturity, the first friend that you lose, especially when it's young and a romantic partner. So I can only imagine how much Yeah, how hurt. hard that and is. The fact that she was ignoring everything and trying to like bottle it up and ignore what was happening around her paranormal-wise, contact-wise, I'm sure yeah. it was really painful to rip that Band-Aid off during that session. So Yeah, definitely. We get it. Maybe one day she'll open up about it. Yeah. Um, I will also read something a little bit nicer. Okay, great. This is from our listener, Alyssa, and it is called Happy Moments, Kinda. <laughs> hey, ladies, love the podcast. I always listen to it while I'm at work. I'm a little late to the show, but I've been binge listening to you guys ever since I heard the first episode. My name is Alyssa, and this might be kind of long, but I wanted to tell you about some visitations that I have experienced from family that had passed on. So August 26th, two days after my birthday, hey Virgo sister, 
My father sadly passed away from a heart attack at age 36. Oh, so sad. Yeah. I was nine years old. My brother, my mom, and I ended up moving in with my grandparents. I was begging my grandpa to build me a treehouse because what little child didn't want to have a treehouse? He finally gave in and started to build it. The night he started it, I went to bed and had the most amazing dream. In the dream, I was walking in the woods by myself. I know it sounds scary, but it really wasn't. And I ended up walking into my dad. He looked at me and smiled, and his exact words were, Do you really think I'm going to let your grandpa build you a treehouse before me? (laughs) And he took me to this tree, and in the tree was a door. He opened up the door, and there were rooms and tons and tons of rooms of fun. We played for what seemed like forever, and when I woke up, I bawled my eyes out. Sadly, my treehouse never got built completely. Years later, I'm now 18, dating this piece of shit guy, and of course, he was ignoring me all freaking day. So around 8 p.m., I still hadn't heard anything from him, and I ended up driving to McDonald's to eat my stress away, and as I was leaving... It was like this voice in my head and in my car was saying, Alyssa, you're going to see Christian, the piece of shit, and a girl walking. Don't do anything stupid. I love you. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't know what to think. So I kept on driving and not even 45 seconds later, I turned onto another road and there they are walking and holding hands. All I could do was say, Thank you, dad. And the rest of that issue doesn't even matter. That's amazing. Crap. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely protecting her, you know, like giving her the heads up, looking at her as a father and then being like, you know what? it It's not worth your energy. Exactly. Just onwards and upwards, baby. Yeah. So now we're going to skip ahead one more time. I'm now 20. It's June 2017. And I'm still with that piece of shit. One day, I just got these heavy feelings. The feeling was words. Someone you love is going to die. For weeks, I was calling and checking on everyone. This feeling wouldn't go away. I was starting to go crazy until one day on July 3rd, I finally woke up in peace. I started my morning routine, just scrolling on Facebook until I had to get out of bed. And I got a text. Hey, your brother is dead. If I was you, I would call your mom. Okay, so what do you even do with a message like that? I'm driving frantic to his apartment while blowing up his phone, and sadly, my brother had passed away. His roommate found him. I can't help but think it was my dad preparing me for this. The night before his funeral, I woke up at 4 a.m. to my brother walking up to me, giving me a hug, and disappearing as I said, I love you. One more story. One night, my uncle Mark was sleeping. This was my dad's brother. And he was having a dream, but his dream turned into a nightmare. My dad was pushing him and screaming him at, screaming at le- and screaming at him as loud as he could. It's not your time. It's not your time. Wake up. It's not your time. Over and over. My uncle woke up to an EMT giving him CPR. I have so many more stories like about my dad channeling through my baby cousin to see me, etc. So let me know if you want to hear more. Yes, we do. Alyssa, send us Gosh, more. I have full Keep up body the chill. I know. Keep up the amazing work and please email any questions you have about this. Um, see you ladies on the other side, Alyssa. She said, P.S. If you choose to read this, please let me know what episode because I'm still super oh, no. far behind. Oh, hold we on. We will email I lost you. My, my headphones. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? She said, please let me know when you read this because I'm still super far behind and I want to listen. Oh, we will. We will. Did your headphone just fly? Yeah, I got chills so hard my ear (laughs) popped my headphone out. (laughs) My whole body strong ear holes. All of the like sphincters and holes were just and then Yeah. I don't know. Wow. Oh my God. I know there's a lot. So much loss which is so yeah. so sad but how incredible that that despite all of this that her dad is super present and her brother too was able to have those moments with her after his passing i know i know that's incredible 
beautiful moments, granted baked into like sad, sad moments or sad experiences yeah. in life. But it's very clear to me that Alyssa's dad is going to continuously be looking out for her. And let's talk about the magical moment of him building her rooms and rooms of tree house to so explore. Cool. That is so fun. So cool. Which also, yeah. is, it, it begs the question again, how, when you have interactions with spirits or visitations from loved ones and dreams, how much time do you get? Because like you and I, I Sabrina, have both had experiences where like, you know, maybe it feels like just a couple of minutes or, or the time is short or it's a little bit longer. But clearly she said, you know, she spent a lot of time playing and yeah. hanging out in there with her dad. So how, what is the determining factor between like her brother is a good example to contrast that to where she got a, a much quicker moment with him to say right that she loves him as it is also weird on. because when i've had dream encounters with people like time does feel really different in the astral mm-hmm. plane but you're also limited to i wonder if it's also dependent on like where you are in your sleep cycle like consciousness versus subconsciousness oh yeah and that's dependent on the time i don't know mm. No, that's a good point. Right, because it's it's not like the assuming that the spirit world you you slip into the astral plane at some point. It's not like it's scheduled and for all right. minutes that you're in REM, you're in the astral plane. It doesn't right. I presume work like that. So that makes sense that it might be shorter or longer depending on when you kind of let yourself slip in and when the other person is finds you there. Yeah. I wish you could schedule it. That would be so nice. I know. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Let me ask you this question that I saw on okay. TikTok. People were like, you don't actually truly know someone until you ask them this question. Oh. Oh. If I nervous. Say, no, it's not. It's not scary. Oh, if I so say flustered. we're meeting, we're meeting, Sabrina, you and I are meeting at midday. What time is it? What time I is would it midday think noon. Noon is mid- midday to me. Yeah. What's, it's, what is it's it funny to you? I thought the same thing. I, I was thinking if anyone a- else asked me, I would think that maybe they were talking about noon. But then I realized that to myself, if I was like, oh, I'm going to do this at midday or like midday, I'm going to do blah, blah, blah. 2 p.m. is midday internally for me. Hmm. But externally, I would just ass- I would be like, do you mean noon? Is that 12? That's what I would assume for other people. I don't think I've ever used – I don't think I would ever use the term midday, though, to schedule something. Right. I don't – I mean, I don't know. I I, I don't know what other vernacular Call me old school, but normal. I use the times because saying 12 p.m. is easier I'll than saying midday to me. Quarter to noon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. It is interesting, though. Some people were saying 10 a.m. I was like, midday, that's morning, baby. What time are you waking up? Like 4 a.m.? Yeah, right. I mean, maybe though, like. It depends on your schedule. Yeah. Huh. 10 a.m. is probably, yeah, it's like a good afternoon snack if you're on the farm. (laughs) Right? I don't know. All right. I'm pretty sure we recently mentioned something about this maybe a few episodes ago, which perhaps triggered Kate to send us an email called Baby Monitor Escapade. Didn't we talk Stop. about baby monitors? It's where I was I, like, We've yeah, talked about them a lot. Send? Well, because my memory of them was not a haunted memory, but that the wires would cr- – you would catch the frequency of like a neighbor or someone else in the neighborhood right. and you would get to listen in on their conversations. Everyone's – Or like walkie-talkies. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, I I pre-read this because I was like, is this a walkie-talkie thing? And there's there's a lot more than uh, just hearing, hearing neighbors in this story. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Hello, my ghostly friends. I wanted to share a weird experience that happened to me just this past February of 2022 on a trip to visit my parents in Florida. Please excuse the length of the story. I'm traumatized and I have a hard time <laughs> not reliving it in great detail. Hello. <laughs> oh, no. I'm so sorry. I should preface this by saying that I've stayed at my parents' house one time before and I didn't experience anything strange. I slept okay. in the same bedroom with my husband. It's even the same time of year. 
And the only difference between this trip was that I had my eight month old son with me. I was pregnant the year before. My parents put a crib in their office for the baby and the office shared a wall with the bedroom that we were sleeping in. We didn't really need to set up a baby monitor because we could literally hear him through the wall, but we did anyway. And the way that we set it up, the monitor was on my nightstand against the shared wall and the camera was on a tray on the other side of that wall, almost directly behind it. So if you took the wall away, the camera and the monitor would be like 12 inches apart. I'm making a point of describing this in detail because you would think that this would prevent any reception or interference issues with the monitor, but it did not. Oh, no. So night number one. We got in super late and we set everything up and didn't get to sleep until like 2.30 a.m. Nothing weird happened at all. We just slept right through. Got up the next day and went about our business. That day, though, I did have a little bit of a weird feeling, almost like I kept seeing things out of the corner of my eye. And at one point, I was walking past the hallway and actually backtracked to look back down it because I thought I saw something. Nothing was there, so I just chalked it up to me being weird like that and not really used to their house (laughs) yeah that night we go to bed and everything's fine until i wake up to the sound of the baby monitor beeping it does this when it loses its connection to the camera and i look at the time and it's 3 30 a.m because why should i not be scared shitless on vacation (laughs) a little background on the monitor it's one that you can connect to wi-fi if you want but you don't have to We connect it to Wi-Fi at home, but we didn't at my parents' house. It was just straight camera to monitor, no internet connection. Also, it's disconnected like this at home before, but only like twice over the last year. So I get out of bed because I know the only way to fix this issue is to turn on the camera and then off. Classic reset. So I drag my butt down to the office, which is only like three feet from our bedroom door, and I sneak in and I reset the camera and I sneak back out. No big deal. Now I'm back in bed at 3.30 in the morning too. (laughs) Yeah. So scary. And probably in the same hallway that she had just felt like she saw someone or saw something. Yeah. Creepy. So now I'm back in bed. I'm setting, I'm settling back in, just listening to the sounds of the house and the baby making noises here and there. And just as I'm about to drift off to sleep, I hear what sounds like a woman's voice coming from a nearby room, not the office, not over the baby monitor but just from the other shared wall. And immediately I get this feeling of dread and I'm like, that wasn't the baby. I know his voice. And also he can't talk. (laughs) So (laughs) full on conversations aren't really his thing. (laughs) I I couldn't understand what the voice was saying. It just sounded muffled like it was in another room. And I should add the other room we shared a wall with was totally empty. and My parents were asleep even further away than that on the other side of the house. So it would be very unlikely that I was hearing them talking. So now I'm laying in bed, panicking, like, I can't believe I just heard that. I'll never be able to sleep again. (laughs) And a minute later, I hear what sounds like a man's voice say, hey, in the baby's room. And I hear my baby make a noise. I'll clarify that this wasn't over the monitor. It was a lower sensitivity level. So it really only picks up if the baby yells. And even then, there's a bit of a delay before it lights up and comes out of the sleep mode. So I grab the monitor and I turn it on. And all I see is my baby just sleeping peacefully, completely alone in his room. It takes a little bit, but I convince myself both occurrences had to have been the baby. And somehow (laughs) I fall back to sleep. The next morning, I told my parents what happened. And my stepmom confirms that they were not awake and chatting at 3.30 a.m. So that theory is out the window. I asked my parents some background on the on the home, but as far as they know, nobody's died in it. And a woman raised her kids there, and it sat vacant for a while after they moved out, but that's it. Fast and she heard a woman too. and a man, right? There were two and voices. Yeah, it sounded like a woman having a conversation, and then it, it was the, the man saying hello. Saying, to hey. Baby. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Fast forward to night number two. I'm awakened yet again by the baby monitor beeping because it had disconnected. I check the time, 3.40 a.m. And I'm instantly nervous. And I also feel like this is really unusual because, again, the monitor has only ever disconnected like twice at home. And it's never happened on consecutive nights or at the same time of day. 
So I climb out of bed, I walk into the hallway, and as I'm approaching the office door, a giant cockroach slips out from under the door crack and is now low-key walking towards me. Ew. And <laughs> it's clear it might just be, like, dying or something because we had left the hall light on and they don't like light, but it wasn't running. So I grabbed the bathroom door to my right and opened it onto the hallway and used it as kind of, like, I don't know, to herd the bug towards the wall and away from me so that I could get past it to the office because, you know, I'm not picking that shit up with a tissue. No, no. This might seem irrelevant and non-ghostly, but I'm including it in the story because dying bugs of that size feels like a bad omen. (laughs) Anywho, I go into the office, I reset the camera and I shut the door behind me. Now I'm back in the hallway and it's one of those hallways that has a light with two switches, one on each end of it. So as I walk back to the bedroom, I reach out to my right and flick the switch down to shut the light off. I take two steps towards my bedroom door and the light turns back on. I turned back. I heard a click and it turned back on. I turned around. I walked or sorry, she wrote it turned back on. I heard a click and it turned back on and I turned around. I walked towards the other switch. I smashed it up to shut the lights <laughs> off. And then I ran quickly into my room and I closed the door behind me before anything else could happen. LOL. Oh my gosh. The next morning, I spent like 10 minutes trying to recreate what happened with the light switch. And I will say that the one thing that I was using was a bit faulty, but, and sorry. And I will say the one that I was using was a bit faulty, but I even had my husband, skeptic, who had, who has been very tired of my stories, come over and try to recreate what happened and he could not. I also And found the she heard the click. Like She heard the click. Someone had to actually right. push it to it's do It's not that. like a faulty wiring where it just like yeah. shuts off. It was right. moved. An it effort, yeah. I also found the cockroach belly up in the bathroom and I thought it looked kind Ooh. of smushed and I thanked my husband for killing it to which he replied, what cockroach? I didn't kill a cockroach. Night number three. Don't you know we go to sleep and I wake back up to the sound of the monitor beeping because it is disconnected again. 3 a.m. Oh, no. I slip in and out of the baby's room and reset the camera without incident. But for the love of God, why is this happening to me? (laughs) Night number four. The baby's not sleeping well at this point. Just super fussy all night. And we figured he was teething, but no disconnected baby monitor. So I'm like, there's hope this is over. Night number five, the baby monitor disconnects at 3.33 a.m. My husband was in the office with the baby at that time, giving him some Tylenol, so at least I didn't have to reset it myself. After night number five, I sort of hit a turning point. I was just over being afraid, and I was just really, really tired. I remember thinking, like, listen, you're not going to hurt my kid. I won't have it. If you stay in that office, I will take my kid out of it. We stayed for four more nights after that, and things changed. It was weird. It just kind of stopped feeling creepy. Oh. Not sure if it was because I was exhausted or if I telepathically told the ghosts off. (laughs) But the icing on the cake, we travel home and I set the monitor back up as I normally do on my nightstand, connected back to the Wi-Fi. And don't you know that stupid thing disconnects in the middle of the night? I checked the time, 3.30 a.m. But it hasn't happened again since that first night home. Thank you for creating a space where we can share our super long ghost stories. See you on the other side, Kate. Okay. I love the way that Kate wrote this. I felt like this was like a captain's log. (laughs) And we were just reading it. Like we stumbled upon it, you know? Um, It doesn't sound like the spirits were bad, that they just were excited about your baby. Yeah. Right. But it is – the guy saying hey but it's hey. just it's just creepy because it's at it's at the, like the devil's hour yeah the timing like 3 a.m yeah. to 4 a.m is the scariest freaking time of the night yeah and you know ghosts can't help that they interfere with technology sometimes it just happens it's kind of like your your yeah. headphone flying out of your ear it just like happens right. sometimes it just happens <laughs> sometimes the energy bursts in. out yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i'm curious it, if yeah. that's like If, one, it's probably because of the timing, the veil to the astral world is a little bit thinner, and so maybe it's easier for them to pop out at that time. But I also wonder if 
if there happens to be something like if that's in between feedings or something like mm. something where the where the baby has been alone for enough time where maybe the spirits are like oh let's we'll just go let's we'll just go we'll just say hello yeah we'll just go make sure he's all he's okay he's breathing he's fine yeah it is know. interesting like it makes me wonder if it's something like familial just in the sense like the fact that she was at her parents house and this is when it happened mm. rather than like because it's never happened since or before that or after that so it does make me wonder why then why there I don't have an right. answer but it makes well, me wonder yeah no I think you bring up a good point because if it was they didn't have the baby the first time they went so maybe right. it's just like a normal visit and perhaps like her grand it was her grandparents or great grandparents yeah. or something that are just kind of like hello baby yeah originally like there or maybe not maybe it's just like you know everybody was together and there was some knowledge that the baby was there and all the family members wanted to come see yeah so they all took turns each night why not 3 30 a.m they all go <laughs> check on the baby yep yeah it also makes me wonder if their baby is going to be very in tune with the spirit world. Oh, yeah. Well, that it's interesting, too, that there were no orbs or anything captured on the – because it's a video, baby monster. Yeah. And I remember That's when true. my cousin – my cousin Addie was little and they had a monitor in her room. My aunt and uncle were, like, constantly posting on, <laughs> on Facebook and sending family and friends video oh with orbs, like – Addie just sitting up talking to someone and there's like orbs zipping around the room. How like, old is yep. Addie now? She is eight. Eight years Does old. Does Addie still see and talk to spirits? I don't think so. Mm. She did see. She's the one who her dog who had passed away came to tell her that her other dog Rowan had passed away. Remember that? And came and visited oh, yes. her at school yeah. and said, Rowan's coming with me. With Basically. me, yeah. Yeah, over yeah. the rainbow bridge. Um, and she did make one or two comments that made my aunt kind of go, is hmm. this a memory from maybe not this life? But I think we like – I definitely asked way too many follow-up questions. <laughs> and I think she got a little spooked and was just kind of like, uh, I don't want to talk about this I'm anymore. No, so. Nothing, no more. Yeah, no. it might have just been like an Im- imagination – or just like kind of saints playing pretend or whatever. Right. But yeah, no, I don't think so. Not anymore. She listens to this podcast sometimes. Hi. Hi, Eddie. She tells people, well, probably not too much anymore because I think she got a little scared. Um, but she tells people that her cousin has a radio show. So that's us. We're on the radio, that's so Sabrina. so cute. We're a radio We're show. Radio. Oh, I love that. <laughs> okay. I have – um. A nice-ish story to end with. It's from our right. listener. Well, that I'm – my final story, not ending our episode because you still have one more. Okay. I'm glad I had to clarify that because <laughs> why not? Okay. It's from our listener, Haley, and it's called, My Brother Helped Me Travel Back in Time. Ooh. Hi, ladies and Leia. My name is Haley, and I've been listening to your podcast for around three years now, and to say obsessed is an understatement. I have plenty of stories of spirits who sass back at Zach Bagans to over 15 ghosts, some good and some bad, haunting my college apartment. But this story is a heartwarming one. My brother passed away when we were six, and it took me a long time to kind of get through my own process of grief. In high school, I started to be in tune and being able to speak with ghosts and being sensitive. I would wake up at around 5.30 a.m. to go to school, and I remember waking up maybe around 4 or something or 3 something and fell back asleep, and I slipped into this dream. In this dream, I was sitting on our old green couch. Everything was how I remembered it before my parents redid the house. Next to me was my brother, as a baby, laying there with a huge grin on his face. He looked up at me as if knowing I was there, I gave him a hug and and thanked him for everything. I looked to my right and saw baby me kind of staring at me with a WTF look on my tiny face. Out of nowhere, my brother started crying. So my mom, who looked the same as she did in photos from the 90s, came over and said, 
Oh, Matthew, do you want your Barney? I remember him grabbing it with his little baby arms and being so happy. Then I woke up. I'm not sure if I somehow traveled in time or lived through a memory, but I remember waking up hysterically crying and thanking him for sharing that with me. Not to self-promote, but if you want to read a fantasy poetry book filled with love, heartbreak, grief, and self-discovery, check out my book, The Princess Who Became a Phoenix on Amazon. Thank you for your time and see all and see you all on the other side, Haley. This is a beautiful version of haunted of haunting of the hill house Mm -hmm. basically where your older your future self is visiting is being seen by your younger self yes yeah oh that's so interesting i mean it it proves to me that time is oh we're ah (laughs) you go you go oh i was just say you go um (laughs) no you go okay i will go it makes me it confirms to me that time is linear and that it's all happening at the same time. And the fact that her oh, that brother is not this, linear. Sorry. Yes. Not linear. Yes. It's all happening at one time. And that her brother in the astral plane was able to take her back. And then that probably has already happened. Mm. Yeah. Right. Oh God. This is so trippy. <laughs> This makes me want to watch Interstellar. <laughs> yes. Yes. I need to rewatch that. Yeah, that's so interesting. I do wonder if she now, if, if certain things like this will happen again in yeah. the future where she'll Whoa. have been a little bit older and not just a, a baby saying oh this strange woman or maybe herself in the future. But like, what if some of her, what she thinks are paranormal encounters from when she was like four or seven or something? Excuse me, I'm about Ooh. to Ooh. <coughs> but like what if she has an experience like that again and then realizes that it was herself haunting her younger self, her, the earlier version that of her. That is so sick. Ugh. Yeah. So trippy. So trippy, but also like such a beautiful moment to like be able to have another – like just for Haley to have another moment with her brother. Mm-hmm. Right, I know. And for him to show I mean, it, it's nice to to also like travel back into a memory. Like what a beautiful way to connect with her to say, yeah. here's you and I together at the beginning of our wonderful uh. lives as siblings with each other. And here's uh. our mom who we love very much. Like get, getting to experience yeah. it all and and see their beginning basically. Yeah. So sweet. I wonder if it was maybe his first memory of her, if that was like a monumental day. Oh, that's interesting. For them. Because I don't know how old they were. In yeah. This, but yeah. I'm imagining very young. Yeah. Okay. I will read the very last one that I have. This is from Paula. Ghostesses. Hello. My name is Paula, (laughs) and I just started listening to your podcast last week, and I am hooked. I know I'm extremely behind, but I listen at work and on my commute. I love your podcast, and I love the both of you. Oh, wait. This was from 2019, so maybe she's closer to catching up at this point. Maybe. Some background on me. I have kind of been open to the paranormal and have been told that I may have a gift of a third eye, but I'm not sure if I believe this because I only get feelings but do not normally see anything. But I wanted to share some That's of like my That's like a specific type of openness. Yes. There's like clairaudient, clairvoyant. I don't know all of them. I should. This should be something yeah. we've like memorized. I feel like we now. talked about it a long time ago, but I don't remember them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, there's, there's a word for this, Paula. So you're definitely sensitive. Yeah. Uh, okay. I wanted to share some of my experiences with you and I'll try to limit it or split them up so that some of that, oh my God, I'm stuttering so much. I will try to limit it or split them up as some of them can be quite long. So here it goes. My very first story. I was 14 years old when I went to Panama with my mom to visit family. We were staying at my aunt's house and one night about halfway through the trip, my mom and I had gone to bed 
and we slept with the door open for better air circulation since there was no AC. I remember waking up that night because I felt that someone was watching me. The creepiest feeling ever. I remember looking at the door and in the frame of the door stood a shadow man. He was tall and the shadow was darker than the dark room. I cannot remember if he wore a hat, but listening to your podcast and listening about the hat man, it really brings back this memory. Oh, for gosh. some reason, for some reason, I could tell that the shadow man was a classy man because he wore a suit. Yes, he was a shadow, but I felt that he wore a suit. But immediately seeing him, I was hmm. scared out of my mind. I quickly covered my face with my covers and I woke up my mom. Mom, mama, mama, there's a man at the door. She responded with, what? There's a man at the door and he scares me. She immediately told me to pray and I ended up falling asleep. The next morning, my mom told my aunt and they did a prayer circle. My aunt blamed the shadow man's appearance on the fact that I was reading Harry Potter as if it invited oh. it into her home because of a oh. book. Insert eye roll. But fast forward six or so years, my abuelita, grandma in Spanish, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and dementia. But she would have moments where she would ask who that dark man was in the corner of her room. Having this disease almost opened her mind up to see the paranormal, but I know that she was talking about that man, the man that I saw many years before. Oh, whoa. I have a theory on this, and you know, as kids, our mind is open to so many possibilities. I feel like because her mind wasn't what it used to be, it was almost as if she was brought back to being a child with that childlike mind. Who knows? But that's my We've story. We've talked about, about the that man. before. Like, yeah. When my grandma had dementia too, she complained a lot about like the man in her closet and all those things. And I think it was so easy to write it off as like, oh, this is just her dementia. But no, like, what if it's they're open up to the paranormal again. Right. Yeah, I think it's it's definitely I – mean, there's so many examples of this, whether it's dementia, yeah. whether someone's just sick. There's so yeah. many examples where where your, your guard or what protection you were using unconsciously or not in your waking life has kind of thinned or lifted, and yeah. you're seeing these people. You're seeing yeah. something else. Yeah. Okay. Since my night seeing the shadow man, I've never been able to sleep with the door open no matter where I am. My second story, the night a demon visited me. <laughs> I suppose I cannot assume that it was a demon, but it was something very, very dark. I had a nightmare that placed me in my first job. I worked retail selling Western and work boots, and I was standing behind the counter when all of a sudden I was pushed down with a force so great, and when I landed, I could not move. I could hear a voice, but it wasn't very loud at first. I was struggling to try to get back up to my feet, but I could not move. No matter what I did, moving was just not possible for me. All of a sudden, in this nightmare, there was a knife right above my throat, but nothing was holding it. It was levitating right above my neck, which caused me to struggle even more to get out from underneath. Right what? before I woke up, I heard this deep, dark voice say something in a language that I could not understand. I jolted upright out of bed. My heart is literally beating out of my chest just writing this. And I had realized that I fell asleep without my necklace. And since that night, I also will not sleep without a necklace on. This is possibly Ooh. one of the scariest moments of my life. I don't know what it said, and I really don't want to know. <laughs> no. <laughs> but to end this on a funny story, one night I woke up because my bed was being shaken. I remember waking Grand, up and saying there. to myself, if it is my... If, it is, if it's my time for them to take me, just take me already. <laughs> and I fell back asleep. Apparently that night I wasn't having being woken up by whatever that was, but I'm still here. So I guess it wasn't my time. <laughs> thank you. For, thank you all for now. Thank you so much for the podcast. It really makes my drive so much more entertaining. See you on the other side, Paula. Um, Paula, that last story reminds me of the time that <laughs> The bed was shaking and I, we had like just recorded an episode where Corinne was talking about experiencing your bed shaking when you had paranormal yeah. experiences and it's like 3 a.m. And I remember texting everyone being like, or I remember texting you and being like, I just experienced it. My bed was shaking. And then immediately right after our group text, like of all the girls in LA were like, anyone else feel that earthquake? <laughs> 
funny because you and I both, I feel like we often try to debunk what we experience paranormal wise, but sometimes we just get so sucked in that it's like, <laughs> even the things that are fully explainable, we're like, oh my God, that has to A be demon. paranormal. <laughs> I do remember yeah, that. Yeah, we that might funny. get carried away a little bit. Just um, a little. Just a tad. But just a tad. Because this is fun. It is fun. Except for the the scary shadow people and that dream is terrifying. And it definitely reminds oh, us I of know. or reminds me of the conversation. I love how I speak for us sometimes. I just like, it reminds us of. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> we have a shared brain. Uh, it reminds. Two girls, one brain cell, remember. <laughs> <laughs> Who has it today? Not me, apparently. Um, it reminds me of the conversations we've had of just demons like manipulating dreams and your realities just to make you feel frightened so that they gain power off of you. Right. Yeah. It is it it is creepy. I I mean, definitely that the dream situation I feel like falls under that, but it's really odd the shadowed man. It makes me curious as to who this person is, especially because yeah the fact that it also appeared to her grandma and the hat man is we've heard plenty of times a familial haunting people's relatives their children their grandchildren will experience it so maybe it was the hat man but also part of me wonders if this is one of those scenarios where the spirit actually is just a family member maybe checking in Mm. and doesn't doesn't have the ability to fully show themselves and so it's this person dressed in a suit maybe a a great grandfather or something or her grandma's dad maybe waiting for her to come over but but just appears so scary i do like your positive spin but i feel like we've learned to trust our guts a little bit more than that and true getting because it's one thing if you see something and immediately you're scared just because you're not mm-hmm. expecting to see it, but for the lingering negative feeling to continue, I think that's where you start to realize, oh, like this is something negative. Yeah, right. And her grandma did seem a bit, I mean, from what she wrote, it kind of did seem like she was a little bit like, who is that? Like it, it was, it spooked her. It, it spooked yeah. her. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Ooh. Well, apparently Paula's attitude about just – Take me now. I can't deal with this with the bed shaking. Probably deterred whatever spirit that was. Be like, okay, well, well, this isn't fun anymore. Yeah. Take me now. (laughs) Maybe that was really quick too. (laughs) I I was thinking about this the other day. I'm reading a book. um, And in the book, it's called The Orphan Collector. And in the book, she like wakes up and thinks that she's in a coffin, but she's like alive. She ends up not being it. But it made me wonder what would you do if you were buried alive? Oh my gosh. I don't know. I really Would don't. Would you know. try to kick yourself out? Uh, I I it, this is a hard question because I feel like I don't know how much you can hear under dirt underground. Yeah. From above ground because a part of I, there were two different scenarios that I was thinking. One is that like, you know, you kick and scream and you try to conserve as much air as possible while like making moves to unbury yourself but then the other part of me was like well you only have so much oxygen down there so you want to keep your heart rate and your breath really really low you want to use the the minimal amount so if you could hear people wouldn't you want to sort of wait until someone was was close by to start screaming help i'm yeah. buried alive but how but do then, you know if someone's around right exactly and also too you're banking on someone approaching like you're wasting time under the assumption that someone will eventually come and that it's not going to be some 13-year-old that's like, oh my God, it's haunted and run away and not tell anyone. Yeah. Yeah. The, I think my my biggest concern is like if you're in a coffin, you don't know what – you don't know if it's just coffin closed and they're not, you're not buried underground or mm-hmm. if you're eight feet underground and then like truly you're screwed. You, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. And if you're buried that deeply, you wouldn't be able to like push up because the weight of the ground would be so heavy. The weight of the ground. Right. I do wonder too how coffin, like modern day coffins, like I I just kind of assume they're like really hard locked in that there's no chance of you 
getting out. Getting out. But honestly, that makes me want, if I were to be buried in that way, I would almost want to be buried in like a very porous, like half molded wooden box. So, or like molded on the sides or something so that it's like, it's not caving in on me, but that I have a chance of Mm. digging myself out. Yeah. I feel like a wood, wood box feels easier to get out of. Yeah. But I don't, I truly don't know how anyone could ever get out of being buried alive. Yeah. I did research for this a long time ago when we worked on Blind Spot. I'll have to dig it up and I'll, I'll get back to you. I'll report back. Okay. I, I would want something because what if you're, what if you're like kind of in a coma almost, but you're, you're somewhat aware. I would want one of those strings and rings attached to my finger. <gasps> yeah. And then I'd want another one like glued to my eyelashes. So if it, if I can't move the rest of my body, but like my eyes can go, people would still hear mm. like a little ding, a ding, a ding, you know, but that's the plan. This, <laughs> this, this is the plan. If, if you were accidentally thought to be dead and buried alive, not if someone buried you alive to get rid of you. Oh, that's true. I'm totally thinking like traditional cemetery or something. (laughs) Not a murder plot. Yeah, this is a murder plot, of course. Oh, of course. Yes. Who am I talking to? Why why did I think anything else? (laughs) (laughs) If you've ever been buried alive and survived, please let us know. (laughs) Yes, please. (laughs) And tell us all your ghost stories. Yeah. Tell us your ghost Uh, stories. Email Email us. Uh, to two girls one ghost podcast at gmail.com and watch us on YouTube. Say hi. Hi guys. Hello. Um rate and review us on iTunes. Yes. And subscribe, follow all that stuff. Tell everybody. Rating and reviewing and telling people is significant because that definitely helps push us out. Yeah. Join the triangle. Get lost in the triangle with us. Oh, maybe it's this. Um, I feel like this is definitely oh, like jazz hands. This is something. We're getting I don't know. it's evolving yeah. every single time. Just like Ooh, our maybe it's like this because it kind of looks like a UFO beaming. Oh, you know? I like that. Yeah, a little bit. These are the aliens. This is our triangle. These are the tentacles connecting us to everybody. <laughs> That's Frick it. Yeah. Love okay. it. Okay. And we um, have social media, we have Instagram, yep. we have yeah. Facebook, we have all the things. Ticket talky. And oh, we Ticky have tucky. Patreon. Bam, Patreon yes, we do. is super fun. We've revamped it. We go live every month yeah. for certain tiers. There's exclusive merch. There's ringtones. There's ad free episodes. All there's exclusive that episodes. Jazz. So All much that fun. jazz. And so fun. And yeah, thank you to our editor and the entire team at FR Digital, Aiden Manning, Eric Foster. All you guys, we love you. Thank you. And uh, thank you to all of you for listening. We appreciate you. And we will see you, see you on, on the, the other, other side. side.